a much feared disease from the past is back. Now, there has been a scarlet fever outbreak in Hong Kong. Hunters have gotten sick. Two children have actually died. What makes it even more alarming is that this appears to be a drug-resistant strain. So should we worry here in the U.S.? Because after all, we are in a global world now where Hong Kong may feel like a long way away, but maybe it's not. We asked Dr. Minaj Chain, who is an infectious disease specialist. So first of all, with the scarlet fever sure. outbreak, which I guess is... a and now it's a part of strep, or it's related sure. to strep throat? It's related to strep. Uh, Do we need to worry? Well, first of all, what is scarlet fever? Mm -hmm. uh, scarlet fever is a disease which is caused by a strep bacteria. Okay. Mm. And a strep bacteria which is in your throat, like a sore throat, but then it causes a rash, a sunburn-type rash, a sort of sandpaper-like feel, and usually occurs in children. And, and, Doctor, we mentioned earlier that this is somewhat of a disease from the past, so, so to speak. What kind of brought it back this time around? Well, it, it occurs in epidemics. Uh, outbreaks occur in various times. In fact, uh, there are rarely deaths from it, and that's why this case, uh, these cases at Hong Kong are concerning, because there were two deaths, and the fact that you brought up that, that there is resistance uh, in this organism. Usually we see resistance in 10 to 30% of these two common bacteria like erythromycin mm -hmm. but in this case there was 60 percent resistance now what uh, do we mean by it. resistance for those who don't know absolutely so what drug resistance means is that when you take an antibiotic it usually kills off the common bacteria mm -hmm. but then there are certain bacteria which sort of proliferate and they are called drug resistant do they almost bacteria. mutate they mutate, and okay. that's how they become resistant. Okay, so what, uh, what do we do about that? Because sure. I assume even if we don't have to worry about scarlet fever in an outbreak here, right. we do have to worry about drug-resistant bacteria of any kind. Absolutely. So one thing that's really reassuring is that we don't have to worry about scarlet fever in the United States. Okay. There have been no cases in U.S. Okay. Uh, so far reported, and certainly not in Memphis either, with the strains that we are seeing in Hong Kong. Mm. Okay. Uh, so what can we do about drug resistance? I think antibiotic resistance, and that's very important to know. Uh, we need to stop overusing and misusing antibiotics. So what do you mean by overusing? Because I would imagine a lot of people might feel they're actually helping themselves when they go to the doctor and mm -hmm. say, Doc, this is what <laughs> I need. But mm -hmm. you're saying we yeah. may not always need to go that route. Right. So actually there was a very interesting study done. So if you go to your doctor and you have a sort of a viral illness and you ask the doctor for an antibiotic, mm -hmm. there's a 60 percent chance that you will get an antibiotic. Really? Yeah. So this is a study done amongst parents when they took their child to the pediatrician and when there's an expectation, there's sort of a push from the patient to say, you know, doc, give me an antibiotic. The doctors tend to give that. So Even do, we, do when we always need it, though? We don't need it. Because they can't do anything with a virus, can exactly. it? Exactly. So often we don't need it. Give you another example. Respiratory illness. We all have a respiratory illness for which we go to the doctor. Like for. a cold, a flu? Uh, uh, yeah, cold, okay. flu, flu often. In about seven to ten cases, right, people will get an antibiotic. What, they, seven? Seven out of ten cases. Seventy percent? Seventy percent will get an antibiotic. And what the studies show that only about 15 to 20 percent may really need it. That is amazing. So it all really of us is. taking those antibiotics when we don't need them, why does that make the drug, I mean the uh, bacteria, able to mutate? Right. To so if, if I gave you a course of antibiotics the first time, you may kill off a lot, lot of your natural flora. Right. Oh. But then the resistant flora sort of begins to grow. It gets and stronger. Right. It gets stronger. I do have to ask you in the few seconds, uh, Dr. Jane, we have left, what about hand washing? Yes. How does this play into all of this as well? It's crucially important. If we are going to stop the spread of the drug-resistant, antibiotic-resistant organisms, one of the best ways is hand washing, especially among children. We have seen a number of studies that show that if children are washing their hands, their rates of infections are, are much lower. Really? The other point that I wanted to make mm -hmm. was that our misuse of antibiotics there is misuse in animal farms in, in giving uh, antibiotics to animals. About 80% of our antibiotic in U.S. Are goes to uh, livestock to give to animals, not to humans. 80% goes so to So it's in the, in the system, it's in exactly. the groundwater, yeah. it's in everything, it's, and it's, so it's, that yeah, it, the just runoff makes the water, And that's what's creating the resistance in our environment. Um, 
and we have to be very cautious and develop so as legislation. consumers okay. we could that's buy it. meat that's an anti all not right doctor that doesn't use that thank you so much we My appreciate pleasure. so much useful information there and okay. dr jane's website where you can get all sorts of information mjane.net thank you so much all right.